Hi, in this video we're looking at how to use custom tables to enable write back to a database. As an example, I'll create a issue tracking table. The first step is to decide where to store the table. In this example I'm using SAP Business 1, so eventually I'd like to tie the table into this. But I may not have write permissions to this database. In that scenario, I could create the table in the Sharpalite database, which is usually sitting on the same server. Come to the tables and right click and select new table. The columns for the issue tracking system will be issue code, which will be the unique code to identify the issue, the description, which I'll make a slightly longer length of 50 characters, the issue date, the date on which the issue was raised, and then resolved date will be the date on which the issue was resolved. This could be left blank. And finally the level. This will be an integer. What we'll do in the level is place a number 1, 2 or 3 depending on the severity of the issue. The next step is to set the primary key. So I'm going to right click on issue code and set as the primary key. Now the table is ready for saving. I'll save the table and the table name will be issue log. I'd like to create a second table that will give the level numbers a, a nice user-friendly description. So as we did before, new table, and the first column will be called level, and it will be an integer, and the second column will be the description. Just as before, we can set the primary key, and then save the table. This will be called issue level. To create a custom table, we need at least one row of data in the, in the underlying table. So I'm going to right click on issue log and edit the table and enter in the first row. Next I'll go to the issue level table and I'll enter in the three levels of the issues. So the first level was low and number two would be medium, level three will be high. Now we have data in the table, we can start creating the custom tables. I'm going to right click on the issue log and generate a SQL select statement. I'm going to use this to see this, the custom table. I'm going to right click and save that. You can see on my desktop I have a shortcut directly to Sharpalite. This shortcut was created by going to the installation directory where there's a bin folder and in there you'll find it an executable called MD Applications. If you don't have this shortcut, you can always go to Query Builder and in Query Builder, right click on the table and select Custom Tables. Then select New and if you have your permission set up correctly, you should be able to create a custom table over the target system. In this case, it's SAP Business 1. We have our SQL statement, so yes, and we can paste it in here remove any top command and come down to the description and change it to issue log. We're creating this table so that it will be integrated into SAP Business 1 because later on we'd like to do a join between the custom table and another table. Select OK and on the details tab you'll find all the columns that were detected in the issues log table. The first step, let's go to the table and come down to the properties on write back. Let's change allow table write back to true. Because it's a write back enabled table, we'll need to change this table name from a virtual table into an ordinary table. So I'm just going to delete all those details and just leave the raw table name. You can see it's prefixed with the database name. Next, let's have a look at the columns. The first column is issue code. And you can see here we've got properties about whether it's unique or not. Let's change issue code to be unique. This is very important when you're doing write back to designate which column or columns are the unique columns. These unique columns are used to designate whether the record should be updated or inserted. Next, let's set the length. It was 10 characters long. Come down to description. And in the case of description, it was 50 characters long. This is used in the validation process to make sure you don't exceed the length. Next, the issue date. Now the issue date cannot be null, so that's OK. And for the resolve date, we may want to leave this blank. So 
it is nullable. So let us change that to true. Finally, the level. We'll come back to this at a later date when we introduce the issue level table. I'm going to press OK now and you can see the new custom table is created. Let's have a look to see what the data looks like at this stage. I'll close that and because we've created it in the SAP Business 1 space, you should be able to see it under tables. I come down to custom tables, here's the issue log and we can select from it and there will be only one record at this stage. What I'd like to do now is go into the web channel and use the data grid entry to enter more rows into this table. There's two ways in which you can enter the web channel. You could, you could use the Windows service or you could start this localized version of the service. Go to the main index page and you'll find that there's a view entry forms link. From here let's search for the new table. You can see under SAP Business 1 there's now a new custom table issued log and there are two icons here. One is for a form entry and one's for a grid entry. If you don't see your table appear in this list, it's probably because you have local connections and the service is running with remote connections. In that case, just restart the service and you should see your table. I'm going to select the grid entry. You can see the primary key is already designated as a filter. And now we can select add and start creating new entries. For the level, at this stage, I still need to enter a number. Let's go to the next step now and adjust this level column so we can enter in low, medium or high instead of these numbers. Come back to the custom tables and click new, SAP Business 1 and we'll paste in the SQL statement for the issued level. I'm just going to remove the top as we did before and I'll set the description to issue level. I'm going to press OK and it's created the custom table and I'll just come to the details tab and in this case just as we did before this level is going to be unique but in addition to that we'd like to, it to be treated as if it was an entity. This will help the engine identify how to validate the level and to substitute the description instead of the ID. Next, just come down to the SQL data type, and in this case it's int32. I just want to change that to a plain integer, otherwise we may get a validation error later on. Save the new custom table and come back up to the issue log table. Now we're going to create a join between the two tables. Come down to level, right click and add a new join. Using the find, we can find the issue level table. And now we just need to marry up the columns. So the level in the issue log table will be the same as the issue level table level. Once this join is defined, the engine will be able to infer that level should be substituted for the description in the issue level table. This is because we've designated it as an identity. One more setting that we can change is if we come to the level column and scroll down, there are various write back options. If we leave it as it is now, it'll pull the description from the level table. So we'd like to use just the word level. So I'm going to set this use this description flag. Set that to true. Let's save this and view the web channel data entry grid. I'm going to refresh the page and we should see the new details come through. You can see now that level has changed to low and medium. And if I was to click on it, and go to the lookup, you can see the only choices I have now are low, medium and high. If I was to enter an invalid value, for example, low x, the validation would kick in. If you get any validation errors, just check that the level on both the log and the level table for the column level is set to integer, not integer 3 for the original SQL data type. I've entered some more data using the data grid, but there's also a or a form entry as well. Let's have a look at this option. Just clicked on the different icon for the issue log table and you, given the primary key which is the issue code we can select the issue and edit the data just as we did before but this time it's not in a grid. Also we could use Excel to update the data. First I'm going to extract the issue log table data into Excel. 
and I'm going to output the issue code, issue date, resolve date, and finally the issue level. I'm just going to change the description of this column to be level. We preview the data. Once we have the data back in Excel, we can delete the formula that's populating the table. Now the table can be changed and if it's bound to a write back, the data can be written back into the table. Let's create a write back over this table now. So I'll come into write back, select the product. In this case, it'll be SAT Business 1, and the table will be the issue log, which we created earlier. Now we just need to bind the columns. So if I double click back onto the table, it'll auto bind. If the auto bind isn't quite correct, you can come in and adjust it. Now I'd like to set the resolve date on some of these columns. So I'll set this one to be resolved. And if I validate, there are no errors. And if I click on execute, you can see that it's updated the table. The next step would be to give this write back a name, in case write back issue log. And if we close this, we could then create a button up here that binds to the table and posts back the data. Let's see what this data looks like in the web channel now that we've updated this resolve data. I'm refreshing the list and you can see in the web channel the same data has come through. There are different ways in which write back can be done. One of them is to use Excel or the web channel as I've just demonstrated. But it's also possible to create CSV files and from the command line write back the data. The details for write back by command line can be found on the Shoplite webpage. Next, let's explore how we can link the custom table back into SAP Business 1. For this example, I'm assuming that the issue log issue code will match up with a particular column in SAP Business 1 in the purchasing table. I'm going to go to the purchasing table and if I pull out the document entry the vendor and the vendor reference. You can see that the vendor reference has a code that matches our issue. What I'd like to do here is now join the custom table to this vendor reference number so that we can see the description of the issue and when it was resolved. Come down to the vendor reference number, right click and select custom and then add join. This will help us to find a join between the custom table and this column. First, come to Join to Table and select the Lookup button and from the list find the Issue Log table. Now we need to define how the columns will marry up. If I come down to Join Table, I can select the columns and how they marry up. From the first list, I'd like to do the Vendor Reference column. I'm using the Find again and I'll tick that and I'll come over to the issue code and select that. So we're saying that we, the vendor reference number should equal the issue code. Press OK and this will create the new join. You can tell the new custom join because it's in blue. Now I can come in and select the issue code which should be the same as the reference number, the description, the issue date and the resolve date and finally the level. Let's preview the data. Notice that because we created the table in the Sharpalite database the correlation sequence is mismatched. In these scenarios we need to specify the correlation sequence when defining the join. So let's go back and edit that custom join. Right click on the custom join and select edit. Come down to the join and press on the edit button. Let's edit the join and where we have the two columns, let's place a default correlation sequence. I'm just going to paste that in on both sides. So basically it's the column and then correlate database default and then the next column and database default. Let's save that and now when we rerun our query you can see it's able to marry up the columns even though the correlation sequence of the issued log is different from the correlation sequence of the host system. In summary, when creating write back, it's very important that you specify the unique columns. 
and have a good look at the attributes of each column so that the lengths are set and the data types are correct. You can also provide default values. If the table doesn't appear, you may have to restart the service. Also be aware that creating custom tables and writebacks requires special permissions to be set up in Site Setup. That's been a brief overview of how to use custom tables to enable writeback to systems.